action. All right. What's up? It's Yovazal, and at long last, I am presenting to you an updated live visual VJ glitch rig rundown, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is different from the first glitch rig rundown I spontaneously posted like two years ago, and mainly I'm a lot better at VJing than I was before. And the gear that you're gonna see in this video is what I've been using for the past year for all my VJ sets, and will probably continue to do so. All the set recordings that are in my live visuals IRL playlist that are dated since August 2021 have been using these pieces of hardware and since the start of 2022 I made a final change to my VJ uh, routing setup that I think is probably unique maybe to, to how I do visuals. Before I go into details, I feel like you should probably at least watch some of the videos in the live visuals playlist or at the very least, I suggest the recording of Sugar Candy Mountain's performance on June 5th in San Francisco. Or, you know, you can come to one of my live visual shows if you happen to be in my area. I'm always like promoting shows that I'm doing on this channel and on my social medias. If you don't know who I am or what my story is or what my deal is with all these, you know, video gear, then I suggest you watch this video right here, which is kind of a walkthrough of how I got into this rabbit hole and how I became an analog video VJ guy. The video also explains some basic concepts about this type of art. Lastly, I should say that some aspects of this rig I also use for recording effects on music videos, but with those types of projects, generally I'm changing up the routing a lot um, because it just depends on the kind of look that I want to get for the video. So this setup mainly is focused on the live visual aspect of glitch art. So uh, where should I start? I guess uh, the simplest thing to talk about is the projector, which unless the venue has an LED screen or an in-house projector and screen on stage already, I'm gonna have to set up my projector when I come into a venue which I already have a video about how I do that. I'm bringing up the projector because it's the last thing in this long effects chain that I've created. The projector is beaming the final, final output onto the stage for the audience to see. So it's a good place to start and to work our way backwards. So the projector is getting a signal and it's getting it from my laptop via an HDMI cable. Wait. But HDMI is digital. I thought you used analog video gear. What's this laptop you're talking about? Well, yes, I do use analog video gear, but not in the way you might expect. I promise. This is gonna make a lot more sense if you just keep watching. The projector is acting as an external display for my laptop where basically I've just extended the desktop onto the projector and that desktop has a full screen video that's being generated in real time by a software called Resolume. It's possible to do an entire VJ set within Resolume. You don't even need any video clips. There's some generative patches that are built in. Some people get really created with just some bare bones shapes, stacking effects and layering. And combined with the MIDI controller, you've got yourself basically a fully functioning video synthesizer with HDMI output. A lot of people create VJ loops using this software. A lot of EDM rave visuals are run using this software. And it's very popular because it's very easy to make it your own. Whatever you're doing in Resolume or whatever is showing up in your composition preview monitor can be sent directly to a projector or a TV screen, or even a digital to analog video downscaler. Like I said before, you can connect MIDI controllers via USB and map them to individual parameters within Resolume, so that way you can change and mix layers and effects without having to touch a mouse, and you can do multiple things simultaneously. 
I personally use an Akai MIDI mix just because it has so many knobs on it. It makes it very easy to do so many parameter controls at the same time. I'll be doing like with my fingers, just moving uh, different layers keyed in to the beat of the music. I also use an Akai Fire, which has a 4x16 button grid, which is really convenient for triggering clips within Resolum. I also use these encoders here just to adjust maybe the scale or the X and Y position of the video clips. This is also really good for making beats in FL Studio. So in essence, Resolum can generate or sample visuals and process effects digitally in real time without any rendering. Okay, so here's the big secret and you have to pay close attention to this. I use two external displays. One is the projector or the final output that the audience sees and the other is a downscaler. Even though Resolume is outputting a full screen video image to both the projector and the downscaler, I'm not sending the same image to them. The projector is receiving the final output, aka the composition. The downscaler, however, is receiving an individual layer separate from the rest of the composition. How is this possible? Well, you have to go to your output settings, click advanced, set one of the displays to show the composition and the other to show a layer of your choice and then uncheck layer opacity. So that way you can turn that layer's visibility down within the composition and still output it to the downscaler without it showing up in the final output. This special invisible layer contains the video clips that I want to send to my analog video effects chain. With the analog video effects chain, I take its final output and convert it back to an HDMI signal and feed it to a USB HDMI capture device that I can then use as a source in Resolume visible in the final composition. In essence, what I'm doing here is processing analog video effects on video clips, bringing it back into Resolume and processing even more digital effects on top of it. Okay. I guess I finally shared the most important secret about my VJ setup. Actually, I know that there are some of you who probably think that the most important thing that I haven't told you yet is what kind of upscaler do I use to convert the analog video signal back into HDMI to use in Resolume? No, your computer didn't die. I just decided it was going to be too complicated and not worth it to edit this particular section into the video. So instead, I just put a Google Doc in the description that describes what I use to upscale and capture analog video. So there you go. Let's move on. So now that I have that out of the way, let me talk about how I route my analog video signal through my chain of gear. So that invisible layer that I was talking about earlier that's being sent to my downscaler, a TV1 universal scaler, this device is receiving the HDMI signal from my laptop and outputting an S-video signal that's being sent to input 3 of my SEMA SFX mixer as source A. The next step is to create a video feedback loop going into source B. The easiest way to do that is to route the output straight into one of the available inputs and select it as bus B, in this case, input one. So I do that in principle, but I'm throwing in two extra devices in the feedback loop to make it more interesting to look at. The first device is the JVC JXC7 color corrector, which fun fact is the base unit for the Tachyons Plus Dream Weapon. This color corrector's output goes straight into a Fluxus by Big Popper Modified Circuitry. This is a, a little kit that I assembled back when he sold those and I put it inside a, a VHS library case as an enclosure. I thought it was pretty cute. The color corrector with its color wheel allows me to uh, well, change the color of the feedback. And the Fluxus, I found, is really good at adding various analog textures to that feedback to make it very visually 
interesting looking. Now I can fade between sources A and B, and as I fade all the way to B, you can no longer recognize or see the laptop output from source A. It's just the feedback loop. One of my key go-to moves for VJing is to rapidly fade between sources A and B to the beat of the music, creating a psychedelic imprint of the image that slowly disappears into a sea of feedback. Thanks to the SEMA mixer's multiple outputs, I can send one of its S-video outputs to my Roland V8 video mixer, which is the last device in my signal path, and it kind of serves as the brain of the rest of the chain because it receives all of the inputs. The second input that goes into the Roland mixer is actually the same feedback loop, but from the preview out of input one, in between Preview 1 and the Roland Video Mixer is another circuit bent device, that's the Coolpix.biz Line Arositor, and its output is going into a time-based corrector before going into the Roland Mixer. There's no way I can better explain this than just showing you the difference between the output version of the feedback loop and the previewed version of the feedback loop. Here on this Roland V8 mixer, the output version is on input 5, and the preview is on 6. As I fade between them, you'll notice that they're basically the same image, but with different textures. Because of their differences, I can make some interesting, flavorful contrasts when mixing, especially with the more geometric white modes. You might notice that the preview version has this sort of halftone look, that halftone texture appears a lot in my visuals and a lot of people ask me how I do it. The answer is, believe it or not, just this cheap little female RCA to male S video adapter that you can get on eBay for like a couple bucks probably. And this basically forces a single channel composite video signal into a two channel S video input and for whatever reason, it produces these halftone looking dots for me. The third and last signal that I send to the Roland mixer is a good old camera pointed at the projector producing a camera feedback loop. For good measure, I have this Archer Super Video Processor in between the camera and the Roland mixer, allowing me to change the camera's brightness, sharpness, and color in ways that can affect the camera feedback's flavor. So now onto the brain. The basic strategy I have with this Roland V8 mixer is to mix between one of the SEMA mixer's feedback loops and the camera feedback using various wipe modes. I could easily get lost in explaining all the cool combinations you can achieve with the mixer and its effects and all that jazz, but I think you probably get the point. It kind of it kind of speaks for itself when you watch my live visuals. That's where all the geometric shapes are coming from. And it's essentially, like I said, the brain that's really switching between the three different inputs. Finally, the Roland V8 mixer's output is sent to my upscaler and into Resolume using the upscaling method I described earlier in the video. The rest of the fun happens in Resolume. Resolume allows you to create a digital feedback loop as well, which I use to my advantage, of course, because why not have more types of feedback? I also blend in a top layer of some more generative stuff. Sometimes I sample the video synthesizer software Lumen to add as a top layer. Sometimes I add my iPad outputting from this app called Fluid Simulator. And you might realize that with Resolume, as long as you have USB ports and HDMI capture devices, you could essentially build your own video mixer inside Resolume using uh, a MIDI controller. On the composition level, I have various enhancements and effects. One of my favorites is the bloom effect, which makes the highlights really pop very bright white, they look very majestic when there's a lot of nice fine texture on the analog video signal. And the more you dig into Resolume and with a similar workflow like this, you'll find that the possibilities are truly endless and really they're only limited by your own creativity and the power of your computer.
And there you go. That's basically it right there. Uh, you'll find that the analog and digital layers in this workflow combine and play off of each other really nicely to the point where it can be pretty hard to tell what effect is produced at which stage. The setup really is the result of me thinking for a few years about how I can take my visuals to the next level and it really it happened step by step just mastering what I had at my disposable. I, I sort of wish that there was a, a good recording of my hands while I'm VJing because I'm literally like dancing with my hands. I will be moving knobs and faders to the beat of the music, they'll, you know, I'll be using one finger to move a knob here and another finger here, and I'll be like oscillating them like that or something, or, you know, turning knobs and moving the faders on the video mixers in a way that's really fluid. And because a lot of my visuals are feedback based, there's always something moving. There's never a still moment in my visuals. I also never use any automation because I like to use my hands. You know, I primarily do visuals for rock music most of the time, so I feel like I would rather play my VJ gear like a drum kit rather than a drum machine. That's it. Uh, I could talk way more about the technical stuff and explain every little detail, but I really don't think it's necessary for you to feel inspired. I feel pretty confident in sharing this setup with you because I know my performances are way more than just the gear that I use. It's really about how I use it. And some of you who've seen me, you know, actually do shows like strangers that I've met at shows, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And and uh, I really, really thankful for that. So I guess now I'm going to get back to creating, performing, doing stuff in the real world. And uh, I hope the same for you too. Peace out. Thanks for watching.